myself. <laughs> uh, we are back with uh, Jarvie Edits Episode 2. Uh, we got another uh, photo shoot that I need editing. Uh, very uh, excited family that wants some, uh, some of their pictures from the wedding from last month. It was uh, December 21st. It was a Tuesday. Um, and just previously, earlier this evening, we did uh, the first Jarvie Selects where I went through and I selected pictures. So these are going to be the results of those selections. Uh, we got it down to the top ten pictures, but there's several levels that we, uh, that we went down on. Um, the top ten, the top thirty, the top sixty, the top 140. And um, in order to kind of, uh, uh, eventually they're going to get 600 pictures from this wedding. And they're all going to be looked at and worked on individually by me. Um, just kind of one of my commitments that I made uh, when I raised my prices a while back that I'd be working on all the pictures. And um, But I'm going to post these, these top 140 so that I can get them out there and then move on to some other projects and come back later maybe in a couple of weeks and finishing the rest off. The rest are more more candid in nature, more, uh, you know, some of the dancing, some of the, you know, the dinner, the breakfast in the morning, a lot of r other random type things. These are going to be more of the, the key moments and the key people and a lot of pictures of the couple themselves. Um, and so I'll be doing this in, in, in Lightroom. I will be checking on Google Plus as it's being recorded and shown live. On Google Plus, there'll be the on air hangout. And if you are watching, go ahead and feel free to say, Yo. Yo, what up? Yeah, something like that. And um, if you have any questions, uh, write them there. And uh, maybe I will, or someone else here in the hangout, will be able to see those questions and uh, ask me them as well. So taking questions. Uh, doing edits, uh, you know, just kind of my typical speed, which is going to be kind of fast. I will be using uh, my little tablet, an old school version I got many years ago. Thought about getting the new one, but this one's been fine, I guess. And uh, i got to find the pen, though. So, well, oh, there it is. Ta-da. And uh, we got some people with us here this evening. Um, oh, and I will also be talking about the photo shoots, about the pic taking the pictures, just kind of interesting commentary about wedding photography in general, and uh, taking some of those. I know some of the typical questions that pe people usually ask, and I'll probably cover some of those. And if not, then just ask me. All right, so uh, starting over here with Ron. Clifford, how's it going? Not too bad. Now, Ron, where are you at? I'm, I'm in uh, just north of Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. Oh, okay. So, just kind of waiting for snow around here. It's yeah. been a really late winter. It's been pretty mild. Do you take people pictures, Ron? Yes, yes, I do. I do weddings and I do people pictures. I kind of go between landscape and nature. And um, I don't do as many weddings as I used to, but that's changing now. I stopped okay. for a while. I didn't. I'm just getting into digital weddings now. I did digital or uh, film weddings for years, and okay. somehow this is all in the last year really quite exciting to me. Nice. Uh, all right, Michael. How's it going? You got yourself unmuted. Yeah, going good, Scott. How you doing? So back from the Caribbeans and uh, recovering from the concussions and. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm back for now. No concussion. I got a MRI for the uh, neck next week. Hopefully it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, but uh, apparently bad things happen when you drink in tropical destinations. Let that be a lesson to you kids. <laughs> I will keep that in mind. Wait. Okay. So we know you do architecture type stuff. Do you do uh, much people? Photography, uh, yeah, yeah, I do a lot of a uh, lot of portraits, uh, a lot of people, um, a lot of weddings. Actually, most of my weddings are on yachts, believe it or not, uh, which is rather challenging. But I work for a, I contract with a yacht company that that rents out yachts here in the Bay Area for uh, yeah. for weddings, corporate events. So probably about eight out of ten weddings I shoot are on yachts, and I've already got about six lined up for for this year. Wow, so pretty much about zero out of 150 of mine are on yachts. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It sounds fun, right, but it can be we're done with it can be really no, challenging, no, especially in. <laughs> How's it going, Scott? I'm doing fine. Uh, SoCal. I know where you're from. Yeah. Uh, what about you and people photography? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Uh, nothing prepared. Nothing professional. Just uh, candid. I tried personal street photography with little success. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I still give it. A, I still give it a go once in a while. Cool. Laura, your mic was kind of soft last time. How's it this time? Probably still soft. Can you hear me? Uh, barely. Yeah. I don't know where it is on the computer, so maybe it's on the bottom. There you go. Well, we'll tell you if you're hotter or colder. Getting hotter <laughs> or colder. <laughs> Just scream. Just shout really loud. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can do that. So, people photography. Yeah, um, I do portraits, mostly on the beach. Nice, being in Key West. Yeah, I don't really have any other location, really, so. Yeah, nice. Katie, out in, in the Carolinas, right? Yeah, yeah, Carolinas. How about you and people photography? Well, you know, I shoot a lot of everything. I don't do... I went to a New Year's Eve wedding, and I was going to shoot it, but the light was just too low, and being a guest, I didn't take any lights or anything. Not yeah. that I have lights to take, but I thought that might not be a, a, an appropriate uh, thing to do as a wedding guest rather than... Yeah. Well, fun. And you've been on a bunch of these hangouts, these little edit hangouts, so yeah. you're old pro here. And then we have Joe. This is the first hangout with you or not? Yeah, I think so. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're on your phone or iPad or? Uh, no, I'm just sitting sit, sit at my computer. Got home from dinner, so. It's a, it's a very square style here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm, I don't know. It must just be the camera on the side. Are you in your garage? you got lots of bikes there. Um, no, this is actually my office. So, yeah, I, I ride I ride three different bikes and, and also uh, uh, renovate old French cruiser-style bikes. There's like 50 of them down in the basement that, that need some work. So, um, so, so you just one of the other things that I do. So you and people photography. Um, me and people photography. I, I don't do a lot of it, I have to tell you. In fact, um, I'm going to Iceland in June and realize I need new passport photo. So I, I'm having a hard time getting my own passport photo taken at this just point. Use one that I've done and just put it up there. <laughs> um, but it looks like in the background that you have a, a light stand with a ring for a softbox. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, you got a good eye. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I have been lucky enough to, uh, uh, to know some people who have, who have uh, you know, given me things to take pictures of. Also, um, these bikes, uh, several of them have, have, have gone up for sale or, or been, been put in some books. Okay. And so I've been using them as, uh, I also have uh, rolls of 12-foot sheets of paper back here. Um, that uh, you know, been 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 using some uh, speed lights and, and taking pictures of those. Cool. But those still aren't people. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I, I have to remind myself that sometimes people use lighting and flashes for other things than people. Um, all right, Jan. Yeah, but it's definitely on my list. Yes, Jan. When uh, when you're not out, uh, you know, doing. Uh, uh, Adobe type things and, and tutorials. What are you What are you doing? That's kind of all I ever do lately. <laughs> I'm <laughs> locked in my room doing tutorials, but I do. I shoot a lot, and you know, I shoot mostly for um, the tutorials. So I'm always trying to take bad pictures. It's hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not too hard for me, but you won't see those this evening. Oh well, send me your bad pictures, please. <laughs> I need them. That'd be fun. I, I, could, I, I have no problems. I let people see my bad pictures all the time. Yeah. <laughs> my bad pictures make me money, so I like them. Um, and Eric. 
Yes, sir. How's it going? It's pretty good. Long time we haven't hung out in a while. But yeah, how's um, your internet? You're dropping in and out, huh? I don't know. It's staying stable for now. Yeah. You keep the kids off Netflix, so we'll see. Okay. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, I do mostly landscapes. But I'm desperate. I, I agreed to shoot someone's wedding, so I hope some of your mojo will come through the internet and land on me. Yeah, um, and. Uh, <laughs> Search through a few. I mean, when you're going through your edits and, and doing your own stuff, get the other monitor out and watch maybe a couple of the back issues or something like that. <laughs> All right. Sure, I'll be doing a few of these. So, Well, speaking of, we better, I uh, hear we don't have a ton of time to get uh, through this all, and uh, we've decided to go through quite a few pictures and edit them. We'll be going through pretty fast. And... Um, uh, so I, well, there's some more introductions to do, but maybe we'll just leave that to the end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it's not time. <laughs> He's not saying a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I will share my screen here. Let's see, where is that share screen thing here? And the second. And I share the screen using Webcam Max instead of a, a Hangout because Hangout has a problem showing the brush tool on Lightroom. And pretty much that's all I use, right, is the brush. Well, I, I use a lot of other things, but I use the brush tool a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Webcam Max displays it correctly, and, and the Google Hangouts does not. So um, there we are. Oh, just kidding, Colby Brown. We'll go to you. How's it going? Yeah, I was just joking around. <laughs> I just I love weddings. I shoot them purely. I don't do anything else, so very excited. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you don't have, whenever I'm booked for the day, please, we, I will re be referring you to Colby S. Brown. What's his middle initial? I Not even close. Scott. Colby Scott Brown. Scott, uh, that could work. It's yeah. Thomas, but that's close enough. Colby <laughs> T. Brown. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm the, the Jarvie intern. That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm trying to get into his next program. So. Yes, the boot camp. The boot camp. I'm thinking about doing the boot camp in, in May. Um, two weeks, 12 days of 12 hours a day of training. A lot is on the computer, a lot is editing, a lot of big projects, just kind of wrapping it all together, but like obviously lots of shoots. But whatever we shoot, we get back and we edit, and we, we work on, and we make blogs, we do everything. So you'll, you'll, I'll see you there, right, for two weeks in, in May? Totally be there. I love Flash as my favorite, and especially wedding, so. Yes, um, we'll be doing lots of Flash. I'm really excited. <laughs> Lots of flash, lots of weddings. We'll have some models, some brides, and learn about interacting with people and assisting other photographers. We'll have you assisting the other people and stuff. <laughs> and then we'll go to, to Bolivia right after that. Sounds so. good. I actually, I need to talk to you about that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, here we go. That was a long introduction, wasn't it? But it was fun to meet everyone. And um, we already have some comments, so if anyone there wants to read some of those comments so I can jump right into the editing, that will be great. So here we are in Lightroom. I'll try to make it bigger by going full screen on that with F. I feel like now that Jan's here, I have to like give shortcuts and stuff. And by the way, <laughs> and it should pop up in the screen like, Control, Control W does this, and F does this. Anyways. Now, I'm really against shortcuts. You know why? Because if you do shortcuts when you're teaching, nobody knows what you're doing. So that's why it pops up in the screen there. Like, they always have, like, this. I was watching a bunch of, uh, I was watching some, uh, some tutorials today. I actually uh, subscribed to lynda.com. It's been many years since I've done that because I want to learn InDesign better. And uh, so I jumped on there. And then lynda.com, I think, crashed. Or it was stopped working, and I was like, oh, what do I do now? Oh, let's do some Hangouts. And that was the history of today. That's what I've been doing. Um, I'm about ready to jump in and start making my first albums, but I 
figure I have so many things to edit that who knows when I'll actually get to finally getting the albums. This was the week to do it though, but I still have lots to edit. Um, that's why we need to find someone that will do an InDesign hangout, like make a photo album, like a wedding type album. That's what I'd be most interested in, live, on air. That would be the coolest. So, if you know anyone wants to do that, that'd be fun. I'd be interested in watching that. <laughs> Yeah, right? Like, and I finally, I've, I've always been intrigued by the people that come on and, and watch these hangouts. And then I, then I got to thinking, wow, actually, I'd really, I'd be interested in watching. Even if it was like four or five hours long, I would watch an InDesign hangout and ask questions and stuff like that. Because um, I'd be doing work while I watched it, so it wouldn't bother me too much. Do you, do you have a printer or a publisher that you're, you're currently using that offers that service? Because they may have somebody there that could do that, that specializes in it. Ah. So you can see if they want to hang out and open a Google account and really uh, and get I a plug for their business, too. And help them out and train them, and they'll, in return, yeah. teach me and give me a billion bucks for me. Wait. <laughs> Those books are freaking expensive. But I, I feel like I'd have to find one like that would be willing to use in design because that's what I've gone with. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them have their own like companies and own products and stuff like that. I know one of the places I use, I mentioned it in the post today, I can either use their software or they'll send me a template that goes in the Adobe products. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was looking for templates like that a while back. Yeah, for them it's just a download. I can go onto their, their, their they do they do high end um, uh, printing, but they also do custom photo books in house. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you can download their stuff here, but that's in Toronto. Send them my way. Once I learn out how to use them, I'll have to find a bunch. Yeah. All right. Anyways, I should I should pre I, I should talk about my editing. Yeah. This is my first run through. Uh, my one of my mantras that I keep saying to myself is, and I tell other people is, you got to pick your battles. We've got, and in total we have just tonight we have 140, uh, but in total I mean there's over 600, and that's just one wedding. I mean we've got tons and tons. If I were to wait till this was a perfect picture, I mean that's just it's it's stupid really. It's it's not like. People will go, I'm just so, you know, perfectionist. I'm like, well, then you're going to suck at this business. Don't go into wedding photography. Um, you know, I'm just trying to overemphasize the point. But, like, you, you just can't wait for every single picture to be amazing. So uh, there's certainly going to be plenty of things you're like, I wonder why he didn't do that or that. I would have totally done this. Well, it's just because I'm getting it to the point where it looks great. They're going to be happy with it. You know what, and if they order a large print for their house, then yeah, I'm going to do the rest of that stuff, you know what I mean? And the larger the print, probably the more I'm going to do to it. But, um, so yeah, I mean, you, if you end up asking a question like, Jarvie, would you uh, crop that, this and that? I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. And I'll probably just crop it right then. What you might want to do is, is just kind of keep mental uh, note and go, oh, he didn't crop it, you know? Or, I mean, it's, it's an interesting discussion to have. Let me know what I do at the end. Like, I noticed you did this a lot and that a lot, and you weren't as concerned about this and that. Uh, I'm not thinking about what I do a lot. It's just so um, rote. It's so, I, I've done it so many times. It's kind of like my subconscious is taking over, and just kind of do different things. It's, it's a lot of the very same things over and over again. So I am so also you surprised. Seem, uh, too concerned about asp. Yes. Can you hear me? Not not concerned about aspect. Not concerned about aspect ratio at all, really. 
Okay. Uh, only concerned about aspect ratio when they order a print and they're like, I want an eight by ten. I'm like, oh, okay. I have to have a, I have to change the aspect ratio. But this stuff is uh, is going to go online. It's going to go on their Facebook. It's going to go in an album. And and on those things, they're not really concerned about aspect ratios. Even the prints, like albums, you know, they're not right. a big deal. Um, but uh, and and my crops are mainly to to avoid distractions. So I, he was kind of distracting in the picture, and I wanted a little bit of a uh, uh, you know a little bit of border between the potted plant. So that's kind of why I chose that that crop in particular. I mean, I could make it even go even further with it and, and avoid all that stuff on the side, and it'd be even better. So, and I will go over the pictures again later, especially the better pictures, the ones that I have even higher rated, and maybe take a second look at them and do a little bit more. So the, the philosophy is do a little bit now, maybe do a little bit more, and then, you know, you kind of have a couple looks at them, but... If you're in this kind of, um, this flow where you're editing every picture tons, then you're just going to keep on doing that. Um, I actually wish I, you know, went faster like I used to, but I, then I started editing pictures a little bit more and doing a lot more with the brushes, and so now I have this, like, addiction to do kind of a lot of editing to each picture. And this is actually more than I used to do. Uh, there's no uh, distinct order to why I'm doing things in the order that I'm doing them. Often it's just because my, br my mouse was closest to that thing. If my ma mouse is really close to contrast, I'll do contrast first. Um, or whatever pops up in my mind first. So there's no like I go down the list in this order because I don't want to have to remember those things. They they take too long to remember. Did my mouse just freeze? Oh, gosh. If you're okay. moving your mouse, it did just freeze. It's moving now. There we are. Nice. Uh, the closer the picture is. Or the poor, if, you know, someone's face, and then I'm gonna smooth her head just a little bit. I'm not getting rid of every wrinkle because I don't do the whole porcelain thing, but uh, I will smooth them down just to avoid them getting too much attention. Things that are sharp get attention, and if wrinkles are sharp, they'll get attention. If they're smoothed down, they won't. Uh, what is one of the other typical questions? I'd let you guys ask, ask a bunch, but um, I know the ones that a lot of people ask to begin with. And one of the ones they ask a lot is they say, wow, you're using a very large brush. When I do things, I tend to use a very large brush. Anyone else do that? No, not really. I do. I, I do a lot. Like I your I team. do if like. Yeah, I use a large brush sometimes. What do, why do you mm -hmm. start use with large smaller brushes. edits and then move larger as I go through? But I I still um, have a great image. That's what I want to try and learn here. Is I know you go through these pretty quickly and you're very efficient at it. So. A fluffy brush. A fluffy brush is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, I call it the fluffy brush. Because it's soft. It's soft. There's there's decent amount of feather, and the flow is down a little bit. Yeah. What about you, Colby, Jan? Yeah. So if there's one thing that you do more than anything else, what is it? For example, is it drag the exposure slider and the black slider, or is it detail, clarity uh, slider? I'd say it's use a brush on their face to make sure it's bright. Excellent. We look at things that are sharp and things that are bright. And so if I've uh, done a good job of making uh, uh, I didn't work. Uh, of making, you know, directing the attention to their face, then, then I'm happy. But um, uh, contrast levels would be the next thing. 
So by using, in contrast, you, contrast you find in contrast slider, the black slider and the tone curve area with the point curve or, or using some of the region areas, like I use especially the lights area in the tone curve over here. Um, uh, and, and making sure uh, exposure is correct. Um, if you're wondering why I don't uh, to, to make things in black and white, it's because that's a whole other uh, section. I'll, t I'll just go through and do everything check out and make a bunch of them virtual copy black and white all at the same time. So I refrain from doing them at this moment unless I only want to offer them the black and white of that image. But that's a scary thing to do because you have to, because they're usually going to ask for it in color as well if you just make it black and white. But I've been doing some things where I'm like, well, I don't want it in color because it's like this very photojournalistic thing. The colors are bad. They were in a barn, you know. Um, and I, I, I send them a message and say, hey, if they're only available in black and white, just trust me that great. They're, they're not worth it in color. Because if you don't send them that message, they're going to ask for it in color, i found. Hey, Scott, I may have mi missed this earlier, but um, when you do your imports, do you just use a, the, the default raw setting for okay. whatever setup you have, or do you zero them? Or I say that's probably the one of the more common questions as well. Uh, my default settings, a lot of fill light. I mean, look at it. Uh, when I import, there's a preset mm -hmm. that puts in 40 fill light. Now, that works for my camera for the D700. And I, I know some other cameras, that amount of fill light will really break down the image quite a bit. Um, but that's my style of, of photography is to have a lot of fill light, a lot more contrast and brightness. And, um, and then a big part of it is under camera calibration in the profile section, I choose uh, camera vivid. And I have a Nikon, so camera vivid is an option. And it really distinguishes my type of photography. So here's ACR 4.6. And so, and then here's camera vivid, which I like a lot more. That's it, uh, the profiles try to mimic what the camera manufacturer does, and Adobe kind of made a bunch of camera profiles to mimic those things. And um, yeah. it does a pretty decent job of it too. You, I, probably your fill gets turned up so much because vivid does tend to increase the saturation of the shadows. Uh, uh, so. But it, it does give you that look. It works great. And like you say, your camera handles it well. Sometimes that doesn't work for everybody. Good. Let's get some of these other typical beginning questions out of the way. Is there any uh, commentary or any questions from the comment stream? There, there was one earlier when we started. Let me go back up to the top there. Uh, gentleman Greg wanted to know, he says that uh, Trey Ratcliffe recommends the smallest pen and pad you can get. What's your opinion on that? Uh, for the tablets, like the Wacom tablet that I yeah, have? Yeah, like what you're using. Yeah. Uh, you know why I, I believe he says that? Is because it saves you a lot less time. Uh, because you, and, and you don't have to move around quite as much. We do, I don't, like I'm using a huge brush. I don't, I'm not about being like super exact. Yeah. And like drawing and things. Um, and, and I would wonder if that also holds true for people that do really detailed Photoshop work. My initial thought is that they would maybe want a bigger tablet and that someone like me would want a small one. I, I use a medium sized uh, Intuos Wireless 4 um, and I have 24 inch monitors and I found that the smaller um, Wacom tablets actually take away some of the accuracy. I mean, you can certainly scale things back to, to maintain accuracy, but having a nice wide expanse, um, expanse for the tablet allows me to have more accurate um, distancing when I'm actually using the tablet for editing. So, I use a medium. I like it. Um, but I do, I have three monitors, and I have my big one, the one that I edit on, the only one I edit on is a 2560 resolution. 
And uh, you know what I do is, so I have 2560, but I've, I've cut my, uh, I've cut my tablet, so it only, right here at the end of here is, is three-fourths of the tablet. So I've got another fourth that is what's going to be working for my other two screens. So for this screen, I'm actually using kind of like I'm using a small tablet. I don't know if that made sense. It made sense in my mind. Mm -hmm. I know that when, um, I was at one of Scott Calvi's seminars, and he uses the medium Wacom. And the reps at the Wacom table really raved about the medium size for most editing. Yeah, I would. I, if I could get the four or the the new one, that's the four, right? I would get the same one Colby has. I'd get the I'd get the wireless, um, yeah. and uh, I'd the get thing the about the wireless is that it's Bluetooth. So um, depending on your system, it it can be a little bit funky. I've heard about um, people having issues. I actually use my wireless plugged in 95% oh. of the time. I do whenever I I do want to pull out and you know just uh, you know sit back in a chair and edit from uh, you know a few feet away, then I'll of course disconnect it. But most of the time I keep it. Um, I keep it connected, and and as I was saying a second ago, the medium is actually the most popular, most sold Wacom tablet they have. Um, I'd love to have that squirrel wheel that the meat, that the new ones have. Looks really great. Uh, so you're seeing I'm doing my own vignettes, right? I'm putting them in, darkening the edges in my own way. Big brushes, really fast. Not a super, super duper exact yeah. science. That way, I, that way I get done, and uh, it doesn't look too. I, I don't know. One of my points is that I don't want the edit to be the point of viewing it. I, if they see my edit, feel somewhat that I have failed. If it works to just direct their attention and make the picture a little bit better, affect them subconsciously or whatever, then that's what I like the best. Yeah, that's a good philosophy. Yeah. If people say, wow, I love your editing, then really, <laughs> maybe you haven't done such a good job of it. Uh, well, there are some people that it's definitely about editing. That's part of their, of their art. But mine is I want them to focus on the couple. Yeah. And, and not focus on me, you know, kind of yeah. deus ex machina, right? I know in the retouching field, they're, they're kind of, that's your fail mark. If people say nice retouching, you haven't really, <laughs> you haven't accomplished it because they shouldn't be able to see you retouching. I guess if you're doing something artistic, certainly, yeah. Yeah. There's a couple other uh, questions in the stream that, that probably come up a lot, but I'll ask them anyway. One's from Joe. He says, how many photos do you shoot at an average wedding? OK, so this one was was a tad bit above average. I did 1,800. Um, I'd say more of an average is 1,200 to 1,500. And how, uh, how long do you shoot for in a day, usually? I do not charge by hour. I do, uh, uh, so therefore, I encourage them. And my types of clients are very excited about photography. Uh, so we do a lot of pictures. Um, I got there for the breakfast in the morning. Like, like, do you do breakfast? I'm like, I, you got me the whole day. Do whatever you want to do. So I got there for the breakfast at like 10 o'clock and then, you know, left the reception at 10 o'clock at night. So uh, I'd say 12, being gone from my house or the hotel or whatever for 12 hours is pretty consistent. I'm not going to be shooting all 12 of those hours because there's some travel from place to place yeah. or breaks in between certain things. But um, so I can't really t say exactly how many hours of actual shooting it is. But um, usually 12 hours is, yeah. is, you know, 10 to 12 hours is pretty decent for That's me. That's a grueling day, I know. And you end up, you said on this uh, on this particular occasion, you're going to end up with about 600 for the bride and groom? Yeah, so I, I picked out 600 pictures for them. Um, and uh, we're going to add the first 140. But the thing is, it's going to end up being more than the 600 because I go through and I make virtual copies 
and I make some oh. of them black and white. So I'll bet I'll jump in and, and, and take 80 of the pictures and make them black and white. So it's going to be up in the 700 range. Okay. But I, I tend to make the, some of the better pictures black and white. That way, I've just doubled the amount of really good pictures I have. Virtual copies rocks. It's an amazing feature in Lightroom. Um, so yeah, keep keep paying attention, Jan, since you asked the question of what are my typical things that I do the most. So do you use the virtual copies or no? Oh, I use virtual copies a ton. Uh, but I, I don't do it in my first go through. I'll go back through and, and then make virtual copies for black and whites mainly. I used to do more funky edits back in the day when, when Lightroom was first came out and it was in beta. I, uh, you know, you play around a lot and you do really funky kind of edits and you just, you're really exploring. And I found that the more and more um, I've used Lightroom over the years and the more and more I've done editing, the less, I guess, quote unquote, exciting things that I will do. I, I keep a very consistent kind of look to my photography. I know that whenever I make, if I go and I try to do this all like a funky edit, what's going to happen is that they're going to love this picture regardless of my actual photo skills, you know, like, oh, well, we love that picture, and then they come to expect that to be done on every single picture, and it's just not really my style either. Like, I want to keep just nice, bright, clean colors, and for that to represent my style. And I have nothing against those funky, fun edits, and I know people will love them. But yeah, just a decision. That's all. Yeah. Well, one of the other questions that went past quite a while ago was about your favorite lens. Um, I uh, I use the 85 and the 24 a lot right now, probably mm -hmm. because they're my two most recently purchased lenses, and because my 70 to 200 has been in the shop for months. Waiting parts. You still haven't got that back? Nope. Holy cow. Yeah, tell me about it. That was like just about when I first got on Google, you had that going to shop. Yeah, yep, yep. That's what I was about to say. That was in one of my first hangouts that you were having trouble with it. Um, yep. Um, so I feel like you have to have like a, a lens that makes the pictures distinct and unique. And I think that like some of these really shallow primes or like the 7200 that zooms in, they make the background kind of blurry, they, they make the picture look unique. Yeah. And, uh, and then you got to have a lens like this lens that I used to, to get kind of the normal shots, the, seven, the 24 to 70, you know? So to get some of the group shot and some of the, the other stuff. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um. Sorry. Uh, 85, I'd say, if I had to pick one, the 85 1.4. Um, and if I didn't do that one, it would be the, the 7200. Mm -hmm. I think if someone's starting into uh, to wedding photography, and I wrote a post about this. Actually, I've never shared it. If I was getting into photog photography right now, I, anyways, if you go to my blog and search that, then uh, that'll come up with that post. And I kind of mentioned some of the lenses and the camera that I would get um, if I was starting. And um, I'll check that out because and I'm I mainly aiming at landscape stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now if I go and do landscape stuff, I'm usually I'm not carrying around the 85 and and the and the 24. I'm carrying around my 24 to 70 and my 14 to 24. Yeah. Especially with uh, when I go around and I do have a series of when I do architecture shots of of temples and uh, I'll, I'll carry those two lenses. That's it. I love the 24 to 70 because I could put a a filter on it. The 14 to 24 isn't so easy. So. No, because you're because you're on a full frame. That's a true wide. Like that's a and close to fisheye at that point. Yeah, there's no filtering and stuff, so. Yeah. Scott, do you take an assistant with you when you shoot a wedding? Uh, yeah, I, uh, it depends the time of the year and how I'm feeling. During the I summer, I, I was wondering I how you set up the, 
I'm sorry to interrupt. I was wondering how you set up the group shots, like the ones you're showing now. You know, do you have somebody standing there who gathers together the grandma and everybody? How does that oh, work? Oh, I, I do it all. I, I do it all. It's, it's become pretty, I have a pretty good flow with it. I get them done pretty fast. You find that um, in today's market, at least amongst my clientele, you know, they didn't pick me because they love my group shots. Like, oh, Jarby, he has the best group shots. Let's hire him. <laughs> Um, so we get them done fast. It's because often, you know, it's it's really hot outside or it's really cold. Right now, it's really cold, and and um, we get them fast, but we get them all. Like we get tons of group shots, but fast, and and the pace keeps going, flowing. And and you'll see in these weddings with these people around, and and I listen. I eavesdrop in, and I listen to their conversations. I to get a feel. For the for what's going on, um, and and you hear people talk about how much they dread the group shots. Like, oh, we got to do these group shots. Like, this is going to be painful. And so, I I am like, I'll go up, come up to them like, all right, it's time for the group shots. We got to get these done real quick because I don't, you know, I'm not going to take very long on them because I heard them talk about it, and then then I see them smile. And they don't know that. I knew exactly the thing to tell them. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so what do they go back and tell their friends and, and everyone else that's there? They're like, oh, I loved him. You know, he was so quick on the group shots. So cool. Cool. And it's not just about it's not just about the, the actual amount of time, but it's the flow and how you how you get it going. There's no really big dead spots and you're you're not overly rushing people and, and yelling at them. Um, but everything just kind of has this flow, and you put it into their mind that you are fast, and regardless of the time, like you could have taken twice as long as the guy that they hated, but it's just because it was a much more enjoyable experience, and they felt it going at an appropriate speed. And um, anyways, so I get them all organized. I really don't um, direct them too much. People... You'd be surprised if you do it correctly. People will just go and stand in the right spots. And That's true. Just, yeah, I remember back back years ago, overposing was pretty common. And when I first started in wedding photography, that was a real issue for me. I wanted everything perfect. And I discovered recently just what you were saying yeah. this year that if I don't work it too hard, people just naturally move into nice places. And and here's the other thing combined with that: if you do started off posing them and putting them in the exact positions for the first couple of them, then what happens later? Well, they, they do it all the time. It. Yeah. They expect every single shot to be that way. We're not going to move until he tells us to move. We're not going to do anything until he does it because we see that he is that way. And, and I started off, especially at the beginning, go up there, just get up there, pile in, everyone. And they're like, and then it becomes expected. But then I, then I, even if it's just for show, I'll look into the crowd, I'll point with my finger, just kind of like I'm thinking to myself, like, and so they're like, oh, he's making sure we all look good. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll do that with my finger, and I'll point, and I'll go, and I'll pick out a couple people, even if it's not a big deal, just really quickly, like, oh, how about you, can you move here, and then you can move over here, and they're like, okay, he's, he's got it down, you know. There's a couple of those token type <laughs> things. Uh, not necessarily because I care about like that everyone you know is viewable, because, um, but so that they really feel comp. There's a lot of things that I do to make people feel really confident. And, and that can't be understated. I mean, clearly, clearly you do this well. Um, wedding photography has an awful lot to do with your rapport with with people. And, yeah. And I mean, you need to be a good photographer. You need to know what you're doing. But paramount to get people's reactions captured on film, you really can't uh, be a killjoy. You've really got to have a relationship with these people. Yeah, that's especially nowadays. I mean, I, I suppose, I, I've been told it wasn't always that way. Um, I've heard yeah, so. <laughs> now, nowadays, very much so. And when people do come, and we're wrapping it back into her questions, Jan's question, when I do have assistance and people coming and, um, and, and shadowing me on the days, 
they tend to they tend to want to ask a lot of like technical questions, which is understandable. But I kind of have to tell them. I say, you know what? The time for how to use your camera and and what shots to take when that that's over. Like yeah. right now, you should be learned about how do you interact with people. Um, you know, like these little things and the customer service aspect of it and and things to do and not to do. And, and that's what you're what you're wanting to learn right now. What uh, should we not be doing? <laughs> uh, oh. What's a surefire way to tick them off? Uh, um, <laughs> rem I'll try to think of things when I'm... Uh, yeah, something will come up. I wonder if you might do it before up. or after I'll a shot when you get done. Um, Scott, because you're doing a lot in around the face and the eyes because it's a portrait. Because I'm closer to her face on this picture, yeah. Yeah, and so at the end of this, maybe a, a quick before and after would... Okay, and because I was, because I like the picture more too, that's another yeah. reason why I spent a little bit more time. It's either because I like it more or because it needs a lot of help. <laughs> um, okay, before and after, yeah, just say before or after. <laughs> So it's not a ton, but it's little things that help. Now, I, one of the eyes is brighter than the, uh, darker than the other, and I'm not going to just lighten that eye up, because if you do that and you only work on one eye, then people will think it's weird. They'll know. They know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something amiss with this picture. Yeah. I really like that crop you did on the other one. On this one? Yeah. Now I, I was getting rid of uh of uh, the mom's hand. Yeah, but I think it really changed it into something a lot more pleasing. Uh, you know, my typical thing is I, I put some borders around there, but I'm gonna go with the kind of brighter look on this one. No particular reason, just felt like doing it. There's another question in the stream there for you. Gary Monroe was asking, how do you present your images to your clients? He said, iPad, website. What, what's your, how do you present those images? Okay, so uh, I use SmugMug and I get them all on a gallery and uh, basically send them the link and say, hey, here it is. But more than that, what their, their first, their, I don't know if everyone wants to learn how to present the pictures from me <laughs> because uh, you know the best thing maybe is have them come and have a big screen and have a viewing party have food for them you know there's all these different types of things that are very business oriented type styles uh, iPad is really great um, a lot of the time for me I will post on their Facebook like here's your pictures because really it's not just about posting it to them but then all of their friends see it <laughs> and um, and they go to the Google Plus uh, if, if I had my way I'd make a blog post of the highlights and tell yeah. a little bit of story and put my personality in there depends how much time you have I guess if you're yeah. doing weddings every week that's hard to do so the Facebook thing's brilliant there's really best brilliant. practices and common practices. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, putting them on, uh, putting them on a blog, and posting that link to that blog uh, to their Facebook or well, Google Plus if they have it. Um, that's that's kind of what I, I go with. I mean, if I really was way into it, you know, one really cool thing is make an album right off the bat. You know, like. Edit their pictures. Don't show it to them, and, and make an album right off the bat. Make a like a really small seven by seven floppy or you know soft cover uh, blurb book for twenty dollars or something like that. I don't know. There's all sorts of ways that it might be best practices for business orientation, but I put them on smug mug galleries and and just kind of let them view hundreds of pictures. Well, Scott, the uh, quick note, the other cool thing about the Smug Mug is, is I do that as well, but you can put them into... Say that again? 
Oh, did you drop? Michael. Earth Michael. He looks he frozen. Did. Oh, there he is. Are you back? Who, me? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Oh, did, did you hear anything I said? Oh. You said? The other cool thing about Smug Mug is you can... That's it. Oh, you can create you can create event pages, and then on that event page is uh, you can create a, a slideshow, and then pretty much keyword all your favorite, what you think were the best, um, put that in that slideshow. So right when they click on that event page, the link that you send them, they're greeted with a, a slideshow that's basically going to show them you know the best of the best right away. Exactly. Um, and then and then from there they can dig down into the individual pre ceremony ceremony uh, reception galleries. So. Yeah, and I uh, and I also have a blog post about this, about my uh, my workflow and how much Smug Mug is involved with it. And I'd go around to different uh, Smug Mug user groups and teach that workflow. And uh, and events was a big part of that. Exactly what you're talking about. So that you know, I make a blog or I post a Facebook with the link to the blog, and the blog has a link to none other than the event, which ha which has inside of it. The galleries, <laughs> and and it's uh, it's a little uh, you know, but each step they're getting a really good view, but it's also uh, it has many homes on the web in Google, you know, like many chances for Google to pick up on this work, and uh, event is a really good way to do it, but blog is very familiar as well. Yell it out loud. Yell your question loud. Okay, Sandra Parlo says, do you find that people ever just want to see their picks before everyone else, though? Uh, no, I haven't found that yet. Maybe I just haven't been asking them, though. Oh, I should repeat the question in case someone didn't hear it. Um, you find that uh, people want to see the pictures before everyone else. And uh, I haven't found that too much. Um, one would assume that maybe with like different types of photography it's a lot more common. With my with my uh, commercial photography for those clients, well yeah, like I have to lock the pages because they want the first time for everyone to see these pictures to be in the um, you know the the advertisements, the billboards that they make and different things like that. So but with weddings not so much. I mean, sometimes with bridals, pictures of the brides before the wedding, um, then obviously because they don't want, sometimes they don't want the, the groom to see the pictures and, and some other people to see them. But not so much with weddings these days. I, I think I, I, I'm pretty confident and I don't really ever have to ask them. I just kind of put them up on Facebook. Hey, your pictures are here. And they might not be the first person to see it. You know? Yeah, I did a wedding this summer in British Columbia, and the the couple that I did it for um, were really private about that. They were pretty clear that they didn't want the pictures posted publicly, so I gave them a private gallery. Yeah. Um, on my my hosting site, I used uh, sorry Photo Shelter, kind of a bad word, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, that's what I did with them, and then they gave me permission to use five or six on a blog post later. Nice. But that's the only time I've run into it just that one time. Oh, and I, I do have that happen with weddings, and, and maybe someone's parent is in the State Department or something like that, or or um, I had a bride recently. It's like, yeah, just to avoid family problems because some people weren't able to go to the wedding and they were still bitter about it. They just go ahead and make it private, and we'll just release it in our own due time. But they're, you know, they're figuring that their family isn't stalking my photography, and, and, you know, so it's not like a rush thing. Like, make sure we're the first people. They're just like, oh, by the way, go ahead and password it. And, uh, and I say, sure, fine, sounds good. Um, okay, yeah, so I do a decent amount of uh, vignettes, but I hope that they're not like, they're just like, oh, it's gradually getting darker type vignettes, not like, oh, that's obviously a vignette. Uh, yeah, I noticed that in particularly in your photography, but after you've seen a couple, you, you don't see the vignette anymore. You're right, it draws the eye to the picture. 
Now we see the before and afters. We're going to go. Oh, that was a that vignette did it. Seemed to do a bunch, but with other people, the hope is it doesn't. So. There's a lot of people that jump on that are like graphic designer that just like uh, the other thing is like, oh, it's not perfectly even, you know. And uh, you know, sometimes it happens. I try to make everything even, but if it's a difference between getting five more pictures edited and, and having it slightly and even so that 0.01% of the population are going to be really bothered by it, then I will go with getting five more pictures edited. So. You're, you're much, much too reasonable. So, Jan, what are some of the other typical things I've been doing a lot of? That you've been doing a lot? Yeah, what have you seen be the tendencies for me? I want uh, someone to tell me what my right. tendencies are. Well, I see the vignetting, and I see the brightening, and I see... Looks like you're increasing contrast. Excuse me, increasing contrast. But I can't really see very closely. You know, it's hard to read what's happening over there. Um, and feel free to ask before and after if you want to say, let's see the before. Oh, I love that one. That's so cool. So did you, do you set up stuff like that or it just happens? Uh, okay, so we, we jumped in this little area that's very typical, this little alcove for pictures at this location. And it's always a struggle to find kind of new different types of things. And uh, based on how he was acting, he was actually a little more... Like, in the engagements, he was a lot more into it. And on the wedding day, he wasn't at the beginning. Like, he, he really wasn't at the beginning. Towards the end of the day, he was, he was doing a lot better. And she is just loves pictures. Like, I think every single sibling came up to me that night at the reception and just talked about how much, you know, the younger sister just grew up with the camera in her hand, basically, taking pictures of herself just all the time. And she just loved it. And she told her mom, she's like, I really want, this is the photographer I really want. She's like, well, we, we've done, had 10 other weddings, and all these other photographers have been just great, you know. And we're familiar with them, and, you know, maybe a little less expensive. And, and she's like, no, I really want the style. So, um so he's that way a little bit. So you'll you'll see that kind of led to him. I had I found like he reacted a lot better when he was looking at her. And so I would even say things. I'm like, just go ahead and look at her. You're just a prop. And I, I said it exactly like that. He, he appreciated <laughs> it. He's like, oh, good, because it made him feel like he wasn't. He didn't need to perform quite as much, you know, like he was just there to make her look good. And he felt really good about that, and that made him feel a little more comfortable. And uh, and you'll see that in some of the pictures, like he just seems to be having a lot more time when he has his head <coughs> against her head. And, and she would look and have a really great expression. Um, and... Uh, so we get up in there, and we have him leaning against the against the the two opposing walls, and it wasn't really working. And so I got, I, you know, I was moving around from side to side, looking through the camera and thinking, I don't know. And then I then I had, you know, I'm like, well, let's just focus on her, and then go ahead and do whatever you want. Pose. It's pretty much probably what I said. Go ahead and do whatever you want. Put your head next to hers. Um, so it was still like, oh, I get to be free doing whatever I want, except that what that I have to put my head to hers, or you know. So it's somewhat posed, you know, and that I gave him a directive, but he could kind of uh, play on that directive and and do different things. So do you look at other people's weddings and you know the, the weddings that they shoot and try to get ideas like that? Like, yeah, you could have the veil be going over there and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I, I actually don't, really. Um, and when I do look at wedding pictures, I really don't think of those things. I just go, oh, that's nice. I really like this. And, and, and a part of me thinks that perhaps my subconscious is storing all that. 
Um, but I'm not consciously thinking of those things anyways um, and, and, and wanting to try to replicate them. But, you know, I, I would not be surprised if my subconscious is doing that, and I've been repeating lots of different types of pictures that I've seen here and there. But I, I don't really, I never really did, well, grow up in photography looking at people's pictures. Um, it was a very experimentative, I'd try a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, five, six years ago, people were, didn't have all the, the massive amounts of tutorials and hangouts and video things that they have now. There weren't as many photo walks and photo meetups and, you know, little free classes here and there in the community. That all wasn't really around. I'm not saying that people were against that, but that the culture just wasn't there. And, uh, and so really I had to teach myself anyways. And so it's really cool that people have that aspect now because, I mean, it took me tons and tons of time. Uh, whereas, you know, let's take for example interns that I, I might be teaching, you know, they leave a summer in internship or knowing so much, like knowing what I knew like after a year or two. And it just comes much quickly, quicker. Yeah, I understand what you mean. It's funny because I went to regular photography school in the university. Yeah. And one of the big things that they did in the classes was have us look at other people's work. Sometimes people who were in the school, a lot of it was, you know, famous people's work, the master's work and that kind of stuff. And at first I was all mad about that because I was like, hey, I could look at books at home. You know, I paid all this money. Teach me something. But yeah. then I realized, for me, it really was important. Not because I was trying to copy their style, but because it opened my eyes in some way. It made me um, be able to see better when I was taking my own pictures. It sounds funny, but anyway, it really helped me to look at other people's work. Not I, because uh, I wanted to copy. I've taught in schools and stuff like that, like telling people, like, look at other uh, photography, which is kind of funny since I never really did all that much. Uh, but I know there's different types of people, you know what I mean? So, What about the rest of you guys? Are you the ones that that are benefited from it or tend to not? Joe, Katie? I look a lot at other people's photos, but I, th I often look at them and sort of critique them and, and figure out what I would have done differently and then try to replicate what I would have done, not what they did. Yeah, I, I, I look a lot of photos as well. Um, I've been working on trying to learn to process a lot of stuff, so I will look at, you know, Colby's stuff or, you know, uh, Jay and Marina Patel's landscapes are, are great things to look at and say, okay, how do, how do I make these zero raw images that I've got look anything like that? Joe, um, you didn't have to say that about Colby. He left. You didn't have to... <laughs> Just joking. Go ahead. I was saying the portrait community still isn't very open like that. Yeah. Um, now, Katie, some, something you said, uh, well, looking at pictures, I, I think it's more than, there's a good, better, best, um, where you can look at them, and that's good, but if you have, like, some objective, like you were talking about, like, some mental exercise for yourself, and that can be better, you know? Yeah. You approach it with some type of meaning. Something like that. Well, I mean, I always look at other people's photos and, and think, you know, what do I like about this photo? What would I change about this photo? How can I do it? How would I do it in my style? Which is generally shooting up because I'm short. <laughs> I call it a style. Yeah. Um, now, I think the most I've ever looked at pictures has been this last six months since I've been on Google+. Plus. Just a look at lots more pictures than I ever have done in the last five years because of all the people that are on here. And, you know, everyone on my stream is a photographer, and they're pretty great photographers, so I see lots of cool pictures. 
In fact, this brings up the situation. So I was showing someone Google Plus the other day, and I was showing them the cool photographers that were on there. And we went and we looked at uh, at this guy Joe Azur's whole album of of San Francisco Bridge pictures. <laughs> Did you do you remember that? Because like we plus one like twenty of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I do remember that. I was like, whoa, what what got into that guy's mouth? Yeah, you're like I just got Jarvie bombed here. <laughs> <laughs> the plus ones. Well, you know, I, I I did take a lot of bridge pictures this last year, but you know, I it was a concerted effort because you know I've been learning how how to use my camera and do all that stuff, and I was like, you know what, I need to pick something to yeah. to you know to kind of be a constant you know uh, you know target of what I'm shooting, and I picked that. Nice. The weather's always different. Yeah, I could see that in your pictures. Lots of uh, fog rolling in and <laughs> rolling out. Hey, Jarvie. Laura put some questions in the chat box from the stream. Okay. Sandra's is, uh, how do you deal with Aunt Tilly standing behind you and shooting all the shots you set up? Uh, I'm fine with it because I'll go shoot her shots that she sets up. Like, she's always setting up these little <laughs> group shots. That's right. She's like, oh, let's get this person and this person together, because she knows them, because she's related to them. And she sets them up. I run over, click, click. I run away, you know, like, thanks for setting up for me. And we joke about it. Make um, it easy. Your best friend should hold your lights for you, too. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I, I'm way, way uh, easy going about it, though, and... And I think that uh, I, I just don't have too many. I don't. I, I don't escalate. Um, and I find ways to get out of it really easily, like uh, without any problems. And 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 the bride and grooms are usually on my side, and they'll they'll kind of say, "Okay, we're gonna go over here by ourselves." You know, there's something like that. Um. No, it's it's a lot of dads will come around and, and take some pictures. I, it's not really aunts so much as dads will come around and when we're sh the moms will help with the dress and the dads will come around with the camera. I try to escape though when it's just a couple pictures. I try to escape the crowd, so it's just the two of them because they act differently, you know. But sometimes they're really comfortable with their parents there, so it's fine. I'll have them come and and hold a light. I put them to work so that they're not, you know, doing other that's things. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then a related question is uh, how do you uh, set up your lights and move them around if you don't have an assistant? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I, I make other people do it for me. I just <laughs> listen. I enlist really cute bridesmaids or the mom. <laughs> They're single friends or a mom. And uh, otherwise, I just shoot. Then if and if I don't have anyone, then I take it as a challenge and I shoot without lights, or I grab my light stand and move it around. And, um, I mean, these pictures right here are all without lights and stuff like that. Yeah. And then uh, Gary Monroe asked, do you have people coming out to you asking to see the shots you're shooting? Uh, not a lot, no. I, I found that the more and more I've uh, done this, the less that they ask. I, I think it has a lot to do with their level of trust. I think a lot of these things have to do with the level of trust, and, and so I might say something, but that doesn't mean that should you should expect that as your experience. You know what I mean? Like your experience may differ because of of your level of experience or how your relationship with the client type thing. Um, but they don't look as much. I'm 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 
I show them my picture a lot more than they ask. A lot, a lot more than they ask. Well, they probably, you know, like you said, you develop that that uh, trust, and you develop it, you know, when you're doing engagement shots, battle shots, all that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised because, uh, uh, you know, it used to happen a lot more, and it, it rarely happens. In fact, it, it was pretty funny. I had a joke about it. I shot a pretty uh, popular YouTube video filmmaker um, for pictures for his online presence and he'd be asking a lot and I was like Devin really? He's like I know I know but uh, I showed him a few and then he stopped asking you know what I mean? Like he was just like do not trust me Devin? You know I do <laughs> you know Gary had a question to kind of roping in the, the bridesmaids to help you. He wants to know how many phone numbers you get from them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty cautious about that, though. I don't really want to be seen as that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do have a lot of bride brides that are very gung-ho about trying to set me up with people. Set you up with them? Yeah, yeah. So, in that case, <laughs> like, on Saturday... Um, that bride is like way into it. She like just thinks I'm awesome and wants to set me up with all of her friends and and so I was at the reception. And I was like, okay then, you know, like I'm gonna go flirt with this one girl a bunch. And so that happened to be the reason why this hangout started a later an hour later. I was just Whoa. about to ask that. <laughs> well, Scott, that was Saturday, so I, I gave Sunday a day off and then I called her today. Scott, you, you don't want to be known as that guy, but how do I get them from knowing me as that guy? That's the problem <laughs> I'm having right now. You are known as that guy? I'm known as that guy, yeah. I disappear for the second half of the wedding, usually, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, stop disappearing for the second half oh. of the wedding. That's going to help you out. That might help. Oh, my... You, you invite me to all the weddings you do, and I come and help you out. Oh, please. <laughs> well, it really is um, my biggest problem with weddings, and this is unrelated to the post-processing, but I don't know how you do it because you get these incredible photos. I usually take about most of the weddings I do on the, on the boats are about four hours in length, and I take 1,600 shots in those four hours, which is way too many, and you know, causes me to spend, you know, t way too much time post-processing, but, um, you know, and, and usually I'm delivering probably less, a lot less quality than, than you're delivering. So, I mean, how did you, did you, when you first started, did you kind of shoot, overshoot a lot, and then kind of... You know, how I to always shot right around the same amount, from uh, 1,000 to 1,500 pictures. Uh, it's just that the amount of good pictures, the ones that go to the client, has just gradually gone up and up and up. You've Which always is, shot digital, right, Scott? I've always shot digital, yeah. Yeah, because that, that was a hurdle that a lot of people had to overcome when going to digital was to learn actually how to shoot more pictures. Yep. Because um, <laughs> you, you would be fixed with the number of rolls you brought to a wedding and every shot had to count. And it, it's pretty liberating once you figure out you can start shooting a lot. Just let it go. <laughs> Um, it's such a hassle to change the film all the time, remember, Ron? Oh, and I no. always ran out of film right at the worst moment. It was so yeah. awful. I always had to have two cameras going, but if without an assistant, you're still stuck. Wow. <laughs> what film? Jo Joe Azor wants to know what film is. <laughs> 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 and we used to have medium format film, and you had to, you know, you had to thread the end into That's the spool. Right. And you're in a hurry, and the bride is about to cut the cake, and it's not going to happen, you know? Yeah, I had so you're lucky spot. Yeah. That was the only stressful thing I think I remember about doing it back then, was, was having to make sure that you had a fresh roll at the critical moments. Yeah. So a question about light. Josh Sully asks, how much are you using flashes during a wedding? Well, we have yet to see me use flash yet. I haven't pulled them out for this wedding. But you've got a signature style once the light goes down, right? 
Yes. I mean, you, you really know what you're doing with those flashes. The, the best time to, to get me to take pictures is right before sunset, because then you'll get then before sunset, then you'll get sunset, then you'll get twilight, and then you'll get night. Yeah. So, and you'll get all those things all kind of wrapped up into one little photo shoot. You're um, probably going to get to that, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of post I'll it. I'll keep that you. stored for my wedding. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? She'll keep that stored for her wedding. Are you getting married soon? Not that I know of. Oh, well, who knows? You're, you're sometimes on these hangouts with your boyfriend. Uh, yeah, I've I've done a couple hangouts with Mark. Uh, I think the most interesting one was when he was testing hangouts on his new Galaxy Nexus. Oh yeah. Look at those. It was probably irritating for all all the other hangout participants though, because there was a lot of like, there was a lot of echo and everything. So how many weddings do you do a year, Scott, and where do most of those come from in terms of finding the clients? Okay, so uh, 2009, I hit my uh, uh, pinnacle where I did 50 weddings that year. I even did three in one day. Um, just kind of worked out. <laughs> they were all in this location, this at this temple. Um, and, and so that next year I said, you know what, I'm done with that, and uh, I'm going to double my costs and therefore do half the amount of weddings. And so in the next year I did half the amount of weddings. Um, so 25, basically. And I did that this last year, too, and that's probably going to be my goal for next year as well as 25. I mean, a big part of it was the fact that, uh, yeah, I doubled my price Usually the best business practice if you want to, you know, not have such a shock to the system is to not double your costs. <laughs> you might want to just, you know, gradually increase, you know, year by year. Um, but, yeah, so 25, and, and what was the second part of that question? Oh, yeah, so where do most of the clients come from? Is it word of mouth? Is it Google okay. Plus? How and when I did that, and... Uh, and, and my clientele started changing a little bit. Uh, I was mainly doing students prior to that. And now I still have plenty of students, but um, like this couple, they're students. Uh, but I'll have uh, people more my age and stuff like that now, people that are paying for themselves. Um, and so in 2010, I haven't checked last year, but I did... 33% in Utah, 33% in California, and 33% other. And uh, I'd say last year I did, well, I did four in San Diego, another in Los Angeles, another in Orange County. Um, where else? Uh, and then I did four in D.C., all in the same month, which was, no, I did five in D.C., four of them were in the same month. Um, and then I've obviously done plenty here in my own state, Utah. So, and then I, I suspect next year I'll be doing a lot out of country and, uh, kind of, I'll, I'll still continue to do lots in California, plenty in Utah, and then, uh, a bunch more fun places because my big announcement that I have yet, to, I haven't really officially announced it yet is that I'm no longer charging for travel. Does this go along with your other posts about doing workshops with people? Like, are you going to bundle that all together in a sense if you can? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try. So, I mean, in August, I want to try to get a, a workshop in Paris since I'll be there. And, you know, so there's definitely other things to do. But I am I'm way into travel-type photography. So, I mean, that's big to me, and I've got this this uh, project of documenting uh, these temples all around the world, so that's another thing. And I like to travel. I'm still single. I can, you know. And so the cost is going to be the same no matter where it is in the world. So if it's Tahiti or if it's California. Now, I'm going to have to up my price to, to kind of 
make sure I don't go broke doing this, but okay. except for and, and the emphasis is, you know, like it's not about the travel costs, it's about uh, the traveling. Like it takes me a day to get there and a day to get back. And the time, yeah. So therefore Utah will have a separate price because I can do two to three times more weddings if it's in Utah because mm -hmm. I don't have travel days. Yeah. So how do you feel about Northeast Tennessee? <laughs> Uh, I've not been. I've been to Memphis is in Tennessee, right? Yeah, but it's not northeast at all. It's southwest. Northeast. What's where's that near? Uh, do you do you watch NASCAR at all? Uh. -uh. <laughs> okay. Well. Do you? Uh, let's see. Well, there's the Smoky Mountains in East Tennessee and the Appalachian Mountains. I've been to Appalachians because I was in Virginia, in Western Virginia quite a bit. It's really cool over there. And then I've yeah. driven. Oh yeah, beautiful country. Yeah, Southwest Virginia and Northeast Tennessee are like in the same area. Like we have the same TV stations and stuff. Nice. So you, uh, are, we, uh, are we planning your wedding here? Yeah. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. I mean, it's the same. There's no extra cost. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I'll be yeah, and you know what? Now. We'll take you hiking one day. Nice. Out to Blue Hole or something. You know what happens when you just take me random places? You, Michael will attest to this, right? Michael and Mark and you get you get. Oh places. yeah, I got I've got the best uh, best profile picture ever taken. I love it. Makes me look like uh, some really professional hardcore landscape photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine's from Jarvie too. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Oh. I've seen a lot of landscape photographers with Jarvie's uh, signature on them <laughs> lately. So, so you have to remember this. June 1st, that's my birthday. Years, years ago I started wanting what I want for, for my birthday is that people just make one of my pictures their profile. Uh -huh. Well, uh, well, I think mine is pretty much going to be my profile all year. <laughs> until, well, until, until are you booked you come for the, the 4th of July in 2015? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, think, I'm, think I'm pretty open that day. Oh, okay, good. My clients don't really book too far in advance. Hey, how long has it been? Because yeah. Colby was saying I shouldn't record these too long. An hour and a half, huh? I think, do they have a limit on um, the recorded versions? Well, after a certain length, um, then it becomes very difficult to cut down um, the hangout. When it goes on I think YouTube, it, I think it's like two hours. Because we had like, what, 10, 15 minutes of just talking? Yeah, just gathering and getting to know each other here. Yeah. So I need to cut that out. <coughs> um, But maybe I'll test it out this time and make people listen to the 10, 15 minutes just to just and to do the investigative questions. work. Sorry, I was going to say I have a question there um, regarding um, uh, starting up. If you were to start up today, what? How would you build your portfolio? What What would you do if? Because I know there's a lot of people just starting out. I know Eric had mentioned he's going to do his first wedding this week. What advice would you give somebody who is just starting out about building their portfolio? There, their there are plenty of people that just don't have big budgets. I mean, you can't blame, and I don't, I don't look down on them. You know, I don't blame them. There's people that just don't have money, and um, uh, and they still need wedding pictures. But another big thing is the people that come and assist me on weddings and have the opportunity to maybe assist someone like me that, that says, yes, you are allowed to. Go ahead and take pictures. Yeah. Uh, that's perfectly great. But then you have to, they have to learn and, and, and be understandable of, of the kind of like some of the things like you really shouldn't be representing those as your own work, you know. 
because you didn't build the rapport with them, you didn't, you know, do a lot of the setting up. Um, you know, if there was lighting, you didn't do that. So you need to be honest to your clients and say, this is, this is, um, if it's, you're talking about portfolio, this is what I am capable of. And capable isn't just I was able to click this button, but it was the whole. There's so many more things in photography than just you know clicking the button. Yeah. And uh, another way to build your portfolio is to go to, you know, wedding shoots that aren't weddings. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah. doing uh, bridal shoots and uh, getting someone to dress up, you know, and stuff like that. Right, yeah, because there are tons of models around here just looking for exposure, just looking for exposure, and they'll do it for free. And I, and I would just add in, that's perfectly great and awesome to do, and that that if you're going to start, you know, a business around this, that I really believe in, in being fair to the clients, that you really need to not portray it like you have done dozens and dozens of weddings because you have dozens and dozens of these models come out. Right. But you're still, there's still a, a leap from, from doing weddings and you know, and getting good wedding pictures, you know, having the experience of the stress, and and just you know, wedding pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. Hey Scott, somebody says, can you switch back to your screen? It's stuck on Michael. Uh, oh. No, it's back now. Oh no, Jan was saying. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, <laughs> let me know. No, we do not want it stuck on me. I really don't mm. switch back and forth much. No, I, there's a way you do one click and it's two clicks yeah. and it jumps around. Okay. Some of the faces you make, Michael. Kind of, uh, <laughs> scary. I'm still, my head's still hurting from that accident in Mexico, Scott. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was someone else I about to ask a question? question? Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying it was someone else had a question. That was you, right? No, I was going to say that uh, Gary had a question about uh, have you ever had stolen equipment and how do you secure your gear at a wedding if you're, well, especially if you do one on your own, it's a lot harder to to keep an eye on things. But. Uh, you know, uh, I uh, okay. This is one of the things when I when I come into a reception area, it's like a game for me. I'm like, my first thing is where do I put my stuff? It's like. Where's the best place? Like, okay, it's over by the DJ because he's going to be there the whole time, and he's already got a bunch of crap laying around. Okay, um, there's no DJ, so where else, you know? Let's hide it in this spot, in this spot, maybe not too close to the doors, and what kind of crowd am I going to have? And is it, you know, is it the type that there's a constant turnaround for the reception? Like, it's one of those receptions where they come and visit them. And then they leave ten minutes. Leave, you know, they shake their hands, have a little bit of the buffet, or is it a sit-down dinner type reception, at, like more fancy type weddings? And in those cases, it's like you know they're the whole time anyways, and they're the the bride and groom's you know closest friends, you know, so it's not a big deal. I'm probably a lot more lax than most people, and uh, I just come back from time to time and rely on the decency of people, I guess. And I'm not doing raging parties like Michael, you know, so. So I'm now sure he doesn't have to worry about that since he's at that yachts. And they yeah. <laughs> Michael, you're on mute. Hard to get away. Got James Bond spies coming up from the water taking his equipment. Yeah. <laughs> the Kraken. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm conflicted here. I, I think I want it really high key like this. I was going to darken some of the edges, but I'm not sure. She does a little bit, but I think she really looks like she's from the 20s or 30s. Yeah. 
the classic. All right, what else are the comments saying? Well, <clears throat> there aren't any more questions, but Sandra Parlow called you Jarvie this time. Oh, Sandra. <laughs> That's in regards to your, your, your uh, phone date tonight there. Oh. Hi, <laughs> yeah. uh, getting a date. It's one of my New Year's resolutions is to go on more dates. So where are you going on your date with this girl? What Mine kind too. Of place? Uh, I I'm going to we're talking about uh, going to the symphony. Wow. I am the photographer for the symphony, and I was talking to her, and she was talking about how like. Like sometimes I just like doing like random, random things, just you know, to experience a bit of different culture. So she was talking about going to a UCF fight, and I was like, oh, perfect. So let's go to a symphony because it's a complete opposite thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I looked on the symphony page, and they had some, some really cool thing going <coughs> on on Friday. So. Hey, hey, Scott, you really want to uh, impress her? You should uh, send her. The Jarvie Wishes picture that uh, Karen, Nel Karen Nelson, Karen Nelson just had a submission. I just uh, posted it in the chat. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, it's good. Is it is it uh, appropriate for me? Yeah, it's good for me to pull up. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, it's appropriate. Oh, yeah. Appropriate. It's all. It's appropriately awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what? It's like Jarvie Norris. Oh, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I want to take a break and post this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she didn't tag me? I want to tag you. Yeah. She's like, oh, I don't want to offend him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a perfect matchup. Oh, gosh. Now I want it to be my profile picture. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that girl was going to be like, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> okay, edit profile. <laughs> Change photo. <laughs> Photos of me. <laughs> there we go. I gotta crop a little bit lower so they can see all my pecs. <laughs> oh, but it makes it such a big part of it is to have the dumbbells. Dang it. <laughs> Uh, put it onto a, another document and put white borders on the sides. Then you'll get it all in. That sounds like a lot of work. It's a lot of work for right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop looking. Oh. <laughs> I thought mine was good. I mean, this. So, my New Year's resolutions have been going all right. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> caption. <laughs> And you said Karen? Karen, <laughs> Karen Nelson, yeah. <laughs> I told her I shared it with you, and uh, she said, oh, crap, is he mad? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm really mad. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Come back. All right. All right. I got to that too. We just that was a long freeze. That is a, the greatest picture of you ever. <laughs> oh my God. Awesome. I want to put on 
my Facebook too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. While you're doing that, there's a question. I didn't hear if it was asked or not, but um, Kamal wants to know, do you use custom white balance during your wedding? And how do you manage it during post-processing? Well, all right, we're coming up on two hours. Do I stop it and start another one and do a part B, or do I just make it long? What do you guys think? Um, okay, I'm going to stop it. So we're going to come back in like five seconds, right? Do you want to start a new one or do you I have to start want it recorded? One. I have to start a new one to be recorded, yeah. Okay, I just didn't know if you wanted the rest of it recorded. So yeah, everyone jump back in if you want. Um, and All right. And watching can jump back in too, so... Yeah, it'll it'll give a good refresh to our browser or something. Yeah. All right. So. Thanks, Scott. That was great. Yeah. Part one, we have a, uh, we got through. Let's see. Um, sixty-seven pictures, and uh, about a little over an hour, hour fifteen minutes, I guess, hour twenty. And so. It's fast. Uh, it would take about it will be about another hour and fifteen minutes I guess to finish up an hour. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for joining part one of the Jarvi edits episode two two and we'll be back for part two. All right, thanks.